Well, the car has been off the road for a long time. And in fact, this is the part of the uh, project that I've really been looking forward to, which is styling the headlamps. Now, headlamps are a defining feature in sports cars, or any car really. And as you can see, I'm doing this before I paint the car. In a future video, I will be showing how I used a roller to paint the body. So that's another aspect that I've been looking forward to. OK, I'm going to go through the whole process. I hope there's quite a lot for you to learn from this. Uh, a lot of it is improvised. Now here I'm cutting some uh, polystyrene sheet on a bandsaw, which I then put in a normal oven, in a domestic oven, and then use various uh, power tools and hand processes to uh, fit the headlamp glasses. So I'm starting here with a tiny bandsaw and uh, using masking tape on the uh, clear sh plastic sheet so that I can copy <coughs> the profile. And the easiest way of doing that is doing one side and then reversing it so that it is symmetrical. I always use a ballpoint pen, it's much clearer. So now I'm very slowly uh, bandsawing around the line, working to the line but not removing the line. And the more time you spend on that, the less time you have sanding it. So there we've got one of the headlamp glasses. So now I'm mixing up some car body filler and I'm going to make a former. <laughs> and the best thing to do is to use the the actual bodywork and make it out of fiberglass. I've used masking tape so it doesn't stick on there. And then I've reinforced the back of it with plastic padding. So you can see that this is a hollowed out former, a little bit bigger than the, the glass. And so that when I fit the glass in, it will follow the curvature pretty well of the, um, of the body. Now here I'm using that wonderful uh, power tool called a power file, which is an abrasive um, sander to painstakingly get the fit right and here I'm using masking tape to secure the lens and then I'm using filler to if you like perfect the fit so it's amazing stuff plastic padding I should really be using disposable gloves so here I'm using the oven and there's a bit of trial and error I think I heated it up to about 130 degrees, I'm not sure. I tried acrylic first and it just didn't work. So the polystyrene, although fairly soft as a plastic, it, it really forms nicely. You can see the uh, mock-ups I used. So um, I forgot to put the metal tray on so the, the grid um, marks were on the acrylic. Here we are. And then I use G clamps to clamp it down. I have to do this really quickly because it cools quite rapidly. And then now I'm doing the painstaking uh, task of getting the glasses to fit. I haven't even worked out at this stage how on earth I'm going to fix them. This tends to be my approach to design. Uh, it's a certain impatience, but it's based on over half a century of making things in wood, plastic, metal, that I'm relying on my confidence that I will come up with a solution. Uh, so I'm just doing one bit at a time, using the plastic uh, padding again. And, and I rather guess the shape I could have done a more complicated shape. I'm using a little um, proton type mini abrasive wheel. It's incredible, the technology today. There's a tool for everything and it really is important to have the right tool. Otherwise you can spend hours messing around. 
Now I'm using some expanded aluminium mesh, I think it's called, to kind of tidy up the projector headlamps. And um, of course the right hand one and the left hand one are completely different, but who's gonna notice? And I'm using some aluminium sheet here. And I'm kind of designing it as I go along and standing back and looking at it and thinking, is that going to look right? So I'm going to use matte black on this. So it looks pretty messy at the moment. Now these little uh, plastic padding lugs are for the screw fixings. And I'm hoping because I'm painting them black, they won't be too unsightly. Here I'm filling in some of the aluminium sheet with filler. And I'm using a chisel here. The secret is to chisel it while it's still fairly soft. You know, if you let it cure fully, uh, you know, after a few hours, it, it, you're causing a lot of extra work. Because it really comes off like butter. And uh, here I'm uh, drilling for the tiny screws that will hold the the glass down so um, you know this is the process and carefully drilling the glass it's not glass of course it's, it's a plastic sheet polystyrene sheet about three millimeter thick and ha here I'm spraying the inside with a matte black and then letting it cure and then sanding down and yeah this is a, a kind of masking piece it seemed the quickest way to um, make sure there was no overspray you know everything is method so that's as far as we've got